characters stand inside. We're actually doing Lord of the Rings. Directors and tiny houses, tiny houses. Houses, remodeling houses. Um, basically. It's not a rather Something that other people call you. I don't call myself as, a cover. As everyone. I am Atish Sharma, Managing Editor at Home Crux Magazine. We've been covering tiny houses for past 10 years and have interviewed many eminent personalities down the line, including the likes of Jay Schaefer, who started the tiny house movement, and uh, yeah. all the other tiny house manufacturers across the globe, from Australia, New Zealand, Europe, to uh, manufacturers who are based in Canada and US with prominent names like Minimaliste, Movable Roots Tiny Homes, Fritz Tiny Homes, and all those guys. And I've been wanting to interview you for a very long time. I'm not sure. All if right. you, I'm not sure if you've been checking your mails because I, I actually have requested to interview, have an interview with you past uh, for past many years. I've been sending you mails. Oh well, yeah, well, obviously April is the one. <laughs> Once April gets a hold of it, then I I I end up doing things. So no, I apologize. I wasn't trying to uh, to ignore you at all. Um, it's uh, you know, that we're still in that first five years. You know, uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of that. But the um, you know, the anytime you start a new business, even though we had an outdoor living company for twenty one years and use all those professionals for the tiny house. That first three years is still it's still a new business, right? Even if you know what you're doing, even if you're a professional. So it's uh, we're kind of in uh, middle of year four now. So we it, things are starting to settle a little bit. You know, our market, like who's our market, you know, right? Who's our main customer base, right? Who am I marketing to? Uh, you know, what what features are should we be pushing? You know, those kind of things, right? And uh, is, so we're just kind of getting where there. Was actually now. getting this is where I was actually getting. Tell us a little about yourself. How did you and April meet and when did the journey of move, uh, Decathlon Tiny Homes begin? Yeah, so uh, April and I met uh, 14 years ago. I started Decathlon Construction uh, 21 years ago. Uh, I had uh, quite literally $3,000 in a hatchback Saturn to my name. and uh, But I wanted to start my own business. I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So that was always a big part of just who I am as a personality. Um, and you know, if, if you have very little, the only thing you can really do is what you know best, you know? Uh, so it wasn't really an option. Like I knew that the only chance I had was to do construction because I could be my own labor force at the start. Right. I could do everything myself, which I did for about the first six months or so. Um, and so that's how decathlon construction began. And I was doing, got into, uh, I found my niche in outdoor living patio covers, you know, outdoor concrete, kitchens, things like that. Uh, met April 14 years ago, and she got on board with the Decathlon Construction doing the service and dealing with the cities and the politics, which also transferred very well years later because we deal with customers and politics and inspections with the tiny homes as well. So it all transferred over very well. And then, you know, about five years ago, I'd say, is when the conversation started, you know, between her and I. And... Two, two things, really, you know, one is I, I always thought it was smart to to be a little bit versed, to have a couple different things. Right. I, I mean, that's just it's just smart if you can. Right. Um, it's not always possible, but we did want another product. So it started there before the tiny house idea even hit me. I wanted to do something else. Right. Um, so and then uh, I was talking with April. We were watching some of the tiny house shows and kind of looking around. It, it started to become that's it started to kind of pop up more and more, I'd say, you know, about five years ago. So we started to see it a lot more. And one thing I was seeing was uh, a lot of the builds. And, and this is not to offend anyone at all, but a lot of the bills, it was kind of like three guys were kind of basically building the house. Right. Um, you know, and it was. What I wanted to do is bring in a level of professionalism that was uh, that was the same as as a foundation house is built. So, you know, uh, we have a master plumber, master electrician, master HVAC guy, master carpenters. Like, you know, anyone who touches our tiny home could go pull a city permit to build a foundation home and do their trade. You know, so it's kind of the same. We, we took that same philosophy, you know, into the tiny home building, uh, knowing I mean, and I just know from being a tradesman myself uh, skilled hands matter. They just do, you know, uh, they just yeah. matter. And, um, you know, you, you will get a better plumbing. If a master does, you will get better electrical wiring. You know what I mean? Uh, it'll be laid out better. Uh, a, a lack of mistakes will not happen, you know? So they test their own things as well, even though we go through our own test process. So, you know, 
But what really sold me on the tiny home was really this, the crux of it, right? Kind of the what nailed it. And I said, let's order trailers for the first time, right? Was, you know, I had owned a Tesla a while back. And I remember sitting in this car, right? And I'm thinking to myself, this is the best thing I ever bought. I've never bought anything better than this. This is literally the best thing I've ever bought and taken home with me. And that was a heck of a feeling. That was cool, right? Like I really liked that feeling. And in order to do that, I needed a product because when we're in someone's backyard for two months, they love us to death, but they're ready for us to get out of there, right? They're like, okay, all right, let's, let's, let's go. Like, let's get out of here so we can use the space. So, you know, uh, a product and then the tiny home, it just fit exactly into our plan. I had all the professionals. We love the product in general. And we felt, I really felt that that was our chance to deliver someone the best thing they ever bought. And you started the company post-COVID period or before COVID? Right before. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, uh, we started running all those supply chain issues and uh, and uh, prices went insane, you know, on all the material. Uh, it's taken four months to get windows. I mean, it, it was wild, man. We were, you know, <laughs> it was really a puzzle trying to fit things together. I was essentially guessing at what houses I was going to sell next and buying that stuff and just putting it in stacks because otherwise it would, I'd have to tell someone like eight months, you know what I mean? Because I'd have to order all the windows and order everything. So we were, uh, I just had to take some educated guesses. I had to do the same for the outdoor living company. Honestly, I was buying trucks of stuff when it was available because, and it was terrible for cash flow, but what else are you going to do? You know, I mean, we had to keep everybody working. And uh, so we had to do a lot of guesswork during uh, like what we we're going to what we're going to sell, you know, for the tiny house. And uh, and that's and that's what I did. We just kind of grinned and bared it, you know, uh, until things loosened up a little bit. So fortunately, uh, things are a lot, a lot more normal now. They're a lot better now. And what challenges you had to face during the initial run of the company? Yeah, the initial run was um, just the kind of the logistics of being legit, right? The logistics of being a legit company. So it was being a, a, an industry that is still, you guys have been covering this a long time, but it's still very new compared to like a car or a truck, right? It's still an infant compared to like those products, right? They, their systems, their boxes are nice and clean, right? You fit right into that box. You fit right into that box. And so we had to go through the process of figuring out how to be legit. So uh, first of all, inspections, right? Okay, how do we get third-party inspection, right? Let's find the right company. Let's build our, let's build our warehouse. We had to, you know, in order to, uh, well, at least you're supposed to have a warehouse. That's part of the, you know, being able to be legit. Yes. So we had to build our warehouse, get the third party set up. And then we had to go to the state because we really wanted to be, and we are now, but it took two years to get it, especially with COVID, a, a certified manufacturer with the state of Texas. So uh, so now when we ship a product, the, the reason this was super important was now when we ship a product, we ship it with a fresh MCO, manufacturer certificate of origin. And that means it's a brand new product, right? So what we had to do for the first couple of years before we could get the state to approve us and vet us and everything was I had to buy the trailer and put it in my name or the company name and then rebuild it. So essentially it was, it was, we figured that out. It was a legit process. It was legit with the DMV. So we had that process down, but A, it was a massive pain in the neck. Okay. There was all kinds of weird papers and pictures and back and forth at the DMV on every single house. So that was really difficult just, just time-wise, but B it's actually technically a used product. So we were shipping a used product because I owned it already, you know, because it's the same VIN number. I already owned it. They are the second owner. So we really didn't like that at all. You know, uh, I mean, we didn't have a choice at first, so we did it. But uh, now we're shipping it out with a fresh MCO. That MCO goes to DMV, title, and that's it. So really streamlined things and was worth definitely worth the effort. And did did you have a customer base even before you started the company? Or when yeah, you were in so, the initial run? Yeah, we well, we had a we have a huge customer base for our outdoor living. So, but they're not necessarily the same customers, you know. So we really were looking for new for new customers. So we just started um we started out because you, I, I believe anyway, I did not think this was going to work if I didn't just start building houses, right? I, 
I couldn't see in my brain, even though I've been selling things for 21 years, I couldn't really wrap my head around selling a tiny house when I've never built one. Right. So we, we built three. So we, you know, we, I took out a loan, we built our first three and then we just started showing them, you know, we started running open houses here. Uh, it, it really, I'll be honest with you, marketing in tiny houses is very unique in my opinion, because, you know, it, it's, it's your, your, we didn't really know who we were looking for, for one, right? I mean, are these going to be older single ladies? Are these going to yes. be young kids? Are they, we, we really didn't know who our customer base was going to be. And as it turns out, it's kind of a mix, to be honest with you. It, it, it's kind of, it's kind of spread. It it's kind of spread along the whole spectrum. So uh, that was really the, the challenge there was creating that customer base. And then we started going to shows and, you know, we're still kind of back and forth on whether doing shows is the right move because it's really expensive. Right. And it takes a ton of effort. I mean, I am really beat down, you know, like the following Tuesday after that whole thing, we drive to wherever it is, Colorado, Tampa, wherever it is. So, uh, but it, it really did. It, it got us noticed right? People started to recognize that, right? You know, and that was really, really important. We needed our brand to be out there. Um, and, you know, by my personality, just one of the kind of skills I have is, is you know, presenting a passion, letting people yes. understand that it's, it's very authentic. There, I'm not a salesman. People say, oh, you're great. I'm, I'm a terrible salesman. You know, I could never sell ice with Eskimo. I would say, what the hell are you doing? No, just cut it out of the thing over there, right? Well, don't buy ice. You know, so it's it's very authentic uh, salesmanship. Uh, so it is selling, but in, in a very authentic way. And I just always thought that was very important because I've done the same with the with the outdoor living as well. And the three models that I assume you're talking of is Athena, Zeus, and Poistin, if I'm pronouncing them right. Yes, yeah, yeah, Athena, a Zeus, and a Poseidon. And the uh, you know we started so we started with three Zeuses actually. Uh, as mm -hmm. it turns out, we've shipped 40 homes. We've only really built five Zeus's total. We only built two more after that. And the real reason, which again, learning, right, is every single person that was coming to see the Zeus, it had only loft sleeping, right? And and so many of the tiny homes we had seen, they had loft sleeping. Like that was, to me, that was like tiny house. I mean, in my brain. Yeah. So that's what we did. And it wasn't true at all. Every single person coming in is like, do you have one with a downstairs bedroom? Young, old, didn't matter, right? Everyone that came in, do you have a downstairs bedroom? And I'm like, no, but uh, <laughs> here comes the Athena with a downstairs bedroom. So I, I just went back to the drawing board. I drew up the Athena, uh, worked out beautiful because the Athena starts at 24. It's a very minimum house, six foot couch, small kitchen, downstairs bedroom, downstairs bathroom. But you can stretch it to 32, to 28 or 32. So it kind of opens up that middle space and it's very versatile because it's just wide open, right? The middle of the home is wide open. So honestly, the 32 Athena has become somewhat of our flagship, to be honest with you, uh, because it's such a it's such a comfortable home. Uh, and then our Poseidon, the idea was, uh, that idea started with a private master bedroom. I wanted a master bedroom downstairs, completely walled off with a door and everything. Like, you know, its own complete room. That's one thing I had not seen, right? That, that's one thing I had not seen around the industry. So I wanted to create that. So I kind of started with the bedroom, right? I kind of designed the bedroom and just kind of worked my way back, you know? Uh, until I got the house. So that is actually our two bedroom house. We do have a loft sleeping and a private master downstairs bedroom in the in the facade. So apart from these three models, do you plan to introduce any new model in any in coming days? You know, that's a really, really good question. And generally speaking, uh, I consider new models on a need basis. And, you know, if, if I get an idea, like we might be, again, this isn't a done deal yet, but uh, we're talking with someone who's doing a handicap community, right? So they're, they're still working on getting their land set. But if, for instance, I need a wheelchair accessible house, I have no idea how I'm going to do that yet, but it's, that would be a reason to do it. Right. You know what I mean? And then of course, if we build five or 10 of those for this community, I'll, I'll, it'll be a model. It'll be a new decathlon model, yes. you know? Um, so generally speaking, it has been kind of on a need basis because I think what a lot of people don't really understand, so I'll try to explain that a little bit, is the first time you do a house, it takes like four times longer 
I mean, because there's so many things to figure out. Because the thing about a tiny house is the wall space is so minimal, right? So every pipe has to go exactly where it has to go. You have to make sure you leave the room for the vent for the washer and dryer to get out, the room for the microwave vent to get out. All these things have to be exactly where they have to be, you know, and you can't just move things around. You know, if you're building a foundation home and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot an HVAC duct here. You just fur it out. You just build a little box, right? Just, <laughs> just build a little box in the corner. You're not doing that on tiny house, right? It has to fit in the wall. So there's just no room. If one thing moves an inch, that means everything else moves an inch. And like our Athena ladder is this far from the door, you know, sitting on the inside. I, I can't move things an inch, yes. you know? It'll mess up the whole layout of the entire home. So, uh, you know, once we got our, and, and that's the importance of models. Also, I'd say for people that are like, I want to design my own tiny house. I would at least say this, just keep this in perspective. I'm a professional tiny layout designer. I'm a professional. It took me forever to get these right. You know, there was a lot of back and forth. So, you know, we, we've laid out homes that we feel work very, very well. Uh, we've put a lot of thought into it and we've already had a ton of customer feedback, in which case we've made tweaks, right? We made tweaks depending on like what was working and what was not. So it's probably better to work off of one of our models and, and tweak it, right? You know, if you want one less cabinet in a Poseidon to make a bigger couch space, easy, right? Piece of cake, you know? Uh, and generally speaking, after doing it so many times, I can generally tell people instantly if their idea is feasible or not. Like I'll know almost right away. So it's very easy when customers come by, they're like, what about this? Yeah, no problem. Easy. What about this? No, just not possible because of this. Right. So I'm able to kind of like let them know right away uh, what we can and can't do with the models. This, this is the question where they're actually coming to. Do you build tiny houses upon request or do you have uh, loads of shells in your foundry and then you just have to customize it as per the customer's need? An excellent question. So what we what we try to do, like the, uh, usually the goal is to have one finished house because our finished work, we take a lot of pride in our finished yes. work, right? So, and, and generally speaking, since it's done and they can just roll away with it, right? Uh, it, it doesn't take too long to sell those. You know, I, I'll usually have to hold them for maybe a month, you know, or so. So I have that, we try to do that. And then one, uh, at least one like halfway, you know, where they can still customize all their stuff. So it's shelled out but we can get them a house in under a month. That's completely their house because it's kind of ready for the walls. Like I have an Athena 32 right now that's insulated and ready for walls while we're working on orders, you know, that are sold already. But that one's sitting there just ready for someone to come pick their stuff out. So uh, yeah, so it, it is a little bit of both, but the idea is to try to have one inventory model that's finished because, you know, you'd be amazed at the difference in finishes, you know? I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a funny saying in construction that the last 10% of the house takes 50% of the time, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's true because it's, it's the details, <clears throat> you know? And then April gets in there and she's like, no, 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 look, we got to, you know, touch this up, touch that up, right? So there's this whole process to, again, getting that house to where we feel we've delivered the best thing they've ever bought, right? And and that is uh, her her eye for detail at the end is really critical there. Because as the builder, let's be, she's the award winning designer, right? I, I put it together, you know? So I may not catch a couple of the little details that could make it just that much nicer, uh, that 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 she does at the end there. So you do you do have separate rules? What are you responsible and what is she responsible for? Yeah, for sure. So I mean, I'm the production guy, right? I, I make it I make it go, right? I keep the wheel turning. Uh, I decide when we have to move the houses around and put them into different bays and you know and start a different process. I do all of the scheduling for uh, when it's insulated, when it's plumbed, you know. So, I mean, April helps with that, but I I tell her, okay, hey, here's when we need the plumber. Here's when we need the electrician, right? So she'll do a lot of the communicating with our subs. Because again, remember, these are people that we've been working with for 15 plus years, right? So these aren't just people showing up out of nowhere. Because honestly, I'm not sure I would have felt really comfortable with just people I've never worked with, you know, especially on a product that, I knew we were going to have to learn. And, you know, I've been through enough stuff in my life. To, I knew that I wasn't going to nail this whole thing on my first three houses, right? I knew that. <clears throat> so I would say it took it took us 10. I'd say it took us 10. I think on house number 10 is where I kind of looked at the process. I looked at how we were doing it. I looked at the build quality and I said, we got it. 
right? Now we got it, right? So it's we, we feel very, very comfortable with where we are now. And, and again, that doesn't mean we won't make any change. I mean, if we get a bunch of customer feedback about our fridge cabinet should be a little taller or something along those lines, right? Uh, those are easy things to change because we have all of our parameters. But at this point, honestly, it's it, we're, it's little tiny things, you know? It's generally just customizing it because we can customize quite a bit of it um, and again, and I'll just be able to tell people like, for instance, so oh, we'd really like a medicine cabinet here. Well, that's a pocket door. Can't do that. Right. We'll have to find another place to do that. So, you know, just things like that, you know, uh, so, uh, that is, um, so yeah, we, th so my role is generally the production. Her role is the design. She puts together this beautiful design document for people. Um, and we tell our customers, you know, Hey, listen, you can be as involved or as uninvolved in the design as you want. I mean, if, if you're like April, do something awesome. And we've had plenty of people do that. And she just does something awesome, you know, uh, or give her a look. You know, I like, you know, I don't know the names, right? Barn Chic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the design names. <laughs> Whatever the design names are, uh, they tell her we like this kind of look. And then she'll do a document and give like five choices of each thing that all will kind of work with that look. Uh, and it's it's very fun uh, process. And but honestly, maybe the, mo the most fun thing, which I, I wouldn't have guessed this, but the, the cutest thing, honestly, is when they name it, when they name their home. I uh, was that, coming to this question that how yeah, do you name yeah. a tiny house? Is it the customer who is the naming it? Uh, is there a certain if, pattern it, you guys follow? How do you name it? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's a ton of fun. When we tell the customer, when we remind them, usually they know we remind them, hey, we're going to need a name. You know, they get this like ghost to look on their face, right? Like, uh, I never thought it was going to be such a big deal, right? I, I I knew it would be cool, right? I didn't think it would be cool and fun, but uh, at the level of seriousness people have taken that to, I did not predict that, you know? So it was a lot of fun. And, you know, when we name our inventory models, we kind of take turns, you know, like our, la our award-winning home out of Colorado is named Penelope. That's my COO's uh, daughter. You know, so, you know, we, we've named, we've named them after our dogs, Neo and Trinity. We've named two of our inventory after our dogs. So, you know, we, I had a, um, a lead carpenter pass away a number of years ago. So the, actually the second home we built, we named Ruben after him, you know, in, in his honor. So, uh, you know, we, we just kind of take turns, you know, around the warehouse and, uh, cause I really like to pull my guys cause yeah, I have a 20 year foreman, a 17 year foreman and a 15 year foreman. Right. So and a number of other vetted guys, a number of guys, more than 10 years as well. So everyone's really a big part of our team. And uh, we like to pull them in and, and have everyone be a little bit involved. And the name, the naming is one of those things. So every single tiny home that we've featured on our website of Decathlon Tiny Homes, we are receiving a lot of comments about, uh, you know, our readers are very curious regarding the material you use for the exterior and the interior finish. Could you brief us a little about it? Absolutely. So <clears throat> number one is you know, don't take shortcuts, right? Uh, that, that's number one. Um, so we are going to build the best house. That, that, that's, that was the whole idea, right? And that was not something I, if, if I did that and it didn't work as a business, then I wasn't going to do the business, right? We were just going to go back to outdoor living and, and leave it alone. So, so yeah, so the, um, we do frame it just like a residential home. So it is two by four framing 16 inches on center. So exactly like a house is framed. So again, you can shortcut that. You can go two foot on center, but you know, the house rolls on the road, you know, and I'm just not comfortable with that. So we do use something called zip sheets on the outside and that's all taped up. That's like your moisture barrier under the siding. Uh, you know, like a shortcut you can take there is something called T-ply. It's like more of a cardboard, yes. you know, uh, it, it's like a cardboardy material. And it, again, it's just, it's not structural. You know, it, it adds almost nothing to the structural of the house while the zip sheets add a lot to the structural of the house. So uh, we have smart siding is what goes on the outside. It's kind of like a hardy facing, but it's a lot lighter because it's a wood backing, uh, but it has a 50 year warranty on it. And we've been using that material my whole career, you know? So I have a lot of experience with that. And then when you go to the inside, it's all spray foam insulation. We have closed cell spray foam in the trailer, open cell spray foam in the walls and the ceiling. And then everything is real. So that is what we really want to do. So we use real wood shiplap, you know, and we're, we have a little bit of a rustic to our homes. We have some wood, you know, accents and everything. 
but I really did it. Well, I wanted it to feel more finished. I, I, that was me and April were on the same page there. We wanted it to be painted. We wanted it to look like a finished home would look. Um, so, uh, but all the trim is real. It's real wood, like real wood one, one by twos around the windows. You know, uh, it's either real wood butcher block or stone on the countertop. Uh, the cabinets are all custom made. So uh, they're, cause you know, think about cabinets. Like, again, it's a tiny house. Things have to be where they have to be. So if you buy cabinets from the store, you have to basically build the house around your cabinets. You know, you have to design a house around cabinets instead of designing the cabinets around the house. So uh, we have the cabinets are custom made. Uh, they're made off site, but they're, you know, he ships them here and installs them, right? So that saves warehouse room too, by the way, because making cabinets is messy, right? So having that done off site is, has been really been a boon for us. Uh, Cause I originally was going to make a section, you know, to do that in the warehouse, but this is just working out so much better. Um, so yeah, so that's, you know, we use a, a, um, a luxury vinyl on the floor. That's, we, we've loved that material. Uh, it's waterproof and scratch proof. We had a customer with three great names living in their tiny house with them. And, uh, you know, we touched base with them a couple years later and we're like, well, if, if anything's going to scratch this floor, it's probably three great Danes, right? So, but they said it's holding up very, very well. So we have a, a lot of really good feedback from the flooring. Um, and of course, under that is going to be three quarter inch CDX. So you never want to use OSB in an area that it can get wet, you know, and not to say the floor is going to get wet, but people will spill things, right? Yes. You know, I mean, it, it's people will leave their door or their window open accidentally one day, right? When it when it's raining, like that's going to happen, you know? So the CDX will literally just dry, you know? It's not going to puff up. It's not going to, you know, cause cause issues there. So uh, so that's a little bit about the material, but the, the name of the game is real and, and don't shortcut it, right? That's kind of the, the two basic philosophies we had when we were choosing these materials. Uh, one thing I'd like to specifically ask you, because over the years, many tiny house manufacturers who started building 22, 24, 26 feet model eventually drifted to making models which made 40 feet long and started calling them park models. So there's a lot of obscurity about what is a tiny house on wheels and what is a park model, if you could brief on this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, a tiny house on wheels, uh, we we are generally um, uh, looked at from the the RV code, the code, the, the, the code that drives on the road. Right. So they don't they, they they don't they don't. That's not a code that they're looking at. They're looking at something called ANSI A119.5, which is the park model RV code. So generally, the rule of thumb is they're wider. Right. They're not road legal. Uh, now, you can take them on the road, obviously, but. Park models are really designed to, to move once. They're designed to move. The, the frame of the house would never hold up with constant travel. It just wouldn't. The frame will bend. It's just not made for that. You know, yes. It's made to go to its location, and then the wheels come off of those homes. Okay, so the wheels come off. It is blocked up. Okay, so they are factory built, so they're going to be running through the factory, right? They're, they're, they're building a lot of those at once. Um, and and as as with anything factory versus custom built, you're going to have a, a drop in quality. I mean, it is what it is. It just is what it is, you know, um, and because it's factory built, you know, but they can keep their costs down because of economies of scale, of course. But it is designed to move once. And one thing that a lot of people kind of forget about is it costs a lot of money to move those. OK, your special permits, lead car, trail car, you know, wide load, you know, the whole, you know, yeah. we see giant things driving down the street that's what it is. And also they're taller. So you have to root it because the national code is 13, six for heights of bridges and whatnot. We are, we are at 13, five, right? Yes. So we can go anywhere in the country, whereas they're going to have to root it sp specifically um, and uh, with, with their drive. And then they have to, of course, set it up, you know? Uh, so yeah, once you're plugged in with one of those uh, it's, it's considered more permanent because they have to, and by law here, they have to why they have to permanently affix the electrical, whereas we are a plug like an electric car, right? So uh, they're a little bit larger. They're designed to maybe move one time, maybe two in their life. Um, and whereas we are a 100% mobile product, uh, permanently mobile, and we do pull with a regular truck. My Ford F-250, my three quarter ton truck can pull every single one of my homes. And I pulled them to Florida, Colorado, San Diego, with my three quarter, uh, I do recommend a one ton if you're going to pull it out. It's a little smoother, you know, but a three quarter will pull our homes. Whereas 
those park models, it's going to be those giant Mack truck types of things, right? So you're going to be uh, basically like a semi, you know, like a semi kind of truck because uh, they're much, much heavier, you know, because they're larger. So that's really the distinction. One's, quite, one's larger and really only meant to move once. And once it's installed, you're, that's where you're going to live, right? Whereas our house is 100% mobile if you're a teacher or a fireman or whatever your job is that you think, you know, you may end up moving to North Carolina. Well, you move your whole house, you know, you take the whole thing. Uh, and we have, you know, we have brokers that we, we help our customers all the time. You know, they're like, hey, guys, you know, I want to move to this other state or whatever. We, we, we set them up you know, and we have it delivered. And it's a very normal like delivery charge, like three bucks a mile. It's nothing crazy. I mean, the most expensive delivery we've ever done is about like 47, 4,800 bucks, you know, up to like Montana. So it's not, you know, it's not crazy. You know, it's still like within those normal numbers that people can kind of afford. Whereas taking a park model there would be like, well, an insane amount of money, right? You know, so and you really have to buy those kind of where you, because again, you don't want those traveling across the country. They're not really designed for it. Um, they're more travel ones, sit there and stay there. Do you, do you see yourself venturing uh, into larger size tiny homes in the future if demands are right? Again, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I know from 21 years of doing business that you have to be flexible. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be flexible. And it's just that now that with the Poseidon, really helped us because it does have two bedrooms. So we have a, a few people that have that have a kid or two that sleep in the loft and they sleep in the downstairs bedroom. So the Poseidon solved a lot of that need for us. Um, but, you know, I'm not really interested in building park models, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I, I, I feel like I'd have to do things so differently that wouldn't inspire me, right? I mean, I want them to be custom built. It Now, if, if you tell me there's a market for custom built park models that are going to cost a good bit more, because they're built the way we build these, I'd look at that. You know, I really would. But I'm not sure that I think the price point we get to a point where I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense anymore. Does that make sense? It's, you know, you, you, we wanted we wanted to kind of keep things because this is the product that really inspired us, the, the, the permanently mobile product, because uh, we love the fact that people can move. You know, or even if you just want to move to another community, you, you can just pick up and go. And if it's local, it's it's very inexpensive to do that. Do you, do you have, if you can just give me a rough number of what's the total number of tiny houses you've built so far and uh, what's your average build rate? Yeah. So, you know, we've shipped, we've shipped 40, we've shipped 40 homes and it's uh, our average, we can, we can pump out uh, if, if we're, if we have, you know, all the orders that we can handle, uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be shipping two, two and a half a month. That, that's what we would be shipping out uh, per month. So that is about the limit of what our facilities and, and warehouse can do. Uh, I do have the manpower to, to do more than that. Uh, but again, the, uh, it'll, again, it's a need thing, right? We've, we've never really had more than six or seven orders at a time, you know? So we, we haven't, and in my mind, I kind of set a number. I'm like, okay, 12 to 15. If we, you know, if we consistently are sitting on 12 to 15 orders, now maybe I start going looking for a new warehouse, you know, and, but again, you know, this, we just want to build people the best thing they ever bought. And, and I'm not really interested in building 50 a month. I, you know, like if it happens, it happens, but that's not, that's not the goal. You know, the goal is to continue to build the best product that we can uh, and, and serve and be able to service our customers because they get all kinds of personal attention here because, you know, we, we, April works with each and every single one of them, you know, they get, they all get to talk to her. It's not an assistant. It's not, you know, some backup, you know, so we're at a point now where we can still do that. Um, and we, we just take a lot of pride in that. So, but yeah, we've shipped 40 in about two and a half a month is about what we ship out. All right. And what's the total number you've built so far? Yeah, 40, 40. 40, right. Okay. All right. 40. Are, are yeah. you just focused on the U S market or plan to ship beyond borders as well? Uh, again, that would be another interesting thing. It really would depend on people coming to me uh, because I'm sure there's things to think about, right? You know, once you're going into another country, we almost shipped one to Hawaii. We were close, right? We were, but they 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 decided to do something else, but we were trying to organize the barge and everything else, right? So that would have been interesting, right? Um, but yeah, right now, uh, mostly the U.S. because, you know, that's where our licenses are, our inspections are, you know, I mean, everything is kind of based here. But I would have no problem shipping to South America, shipping to Canada. 
Um, you know, that would be, uh, and again, we almost sold one to Alaska as well. That, that didn't go through, but almost. Um, so yeah, I'm open to it. And again, it would be more of a need thing, right? If we're getting the calls, uh, I, I would just need a reason to figure out those kind of logistics because that I'm sure that's not super straightforward. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, challenges uh, when it comes to shipping one to say Mexico, you know, or Canada. And what are your future plans? When can we expect the next tiny home from you? Um, so yeah, we have, uh, we have three sold homes that are in production right now. Uh, we should, you should see the next one roll out of here <clears throat> in about uh, between two and three weeks. And then another one or two weeks after that, those are both Poseidons. They finally have their name. It took, <laughs> it, took a whole, it took them both like three weeks, but they came out with their name. We got Shiloh and Phoenix. Shiloh and Phoenix. I, I don't think they're updated on the website as of now. No, no, they're not. They're not. We we have to, uh, but April will always do a full spread uh, of each home. So you will be seeing uh, a full picture spread of those and a little video of the house being shipped out uh, and delivered. And, you know, they're both local. So I'll, I'll likely be delivering those personally. So just the last couple of questions. Uh, what is it about Decathlon Tiny Homes that separates it from other tiny house builders at, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. or across the world? Yeah, you know, and again, I, I'm very careful not to uh, uh, insult, you know, anyone else. You know, everyone does things in the way that they feel is best for their company, and that's completely fine, you know. Uh, but honestly, it's, it's the level of professionalism and frankly, just skill. Okay, I mean, my plumber's been a master for 25 years. You know, my electrician's been a master for 20 years. You know, my master carpenters of 20, 17, and 15 years. So, you know, I, I don't think uh, there's too many other places where the kind of just flat out ability to skill level will be walking into a warehouse. Uh, because, I mean, we are, <clears throat> my guys are just really all, they're all at the top of their game. You know, they're all at the top of their game. So, and to go along with that, my job is to make sure the materials match that level of skill and quality, you know, because you have to have both. You know, uh, my, my all thread rod, my steel that bolts the top wall plate down through the trailer. I mean, these are these are the kind of things we do that are beyond the code. Uh, I don't have to do any of that. You know, I don't need a hurricane clip at the top of the rafter, just at the bottom. But I do it at the top and the bottom. So it's it just really tightens up the house because, you know, the, the difference really is this is our life. This is not our job. You know, April and I will do this for the rest of our life. Right. Yeah. You'll see Decathlon Tiny Homes forever. You know, and, and that's the goal. And that's that's what we're in this. We're lifers. We're lifers. Just like my guys are lifers in decathlon. We're lifers in the tiny house industry. And, uh, you know, we'll see how things progress. You know, I know to stay flexible, of course. Uh, but I'd say that would be the main difference is just the level of skill that that is touching your home. And no one will touch your home from decathlon. That is not a high level expert at exactly that one thing, you know, because that really does make a difference when three guys are just building the whole house. I mean, they're not electricians, they're not plumbers, they're not insulation guys, right? So it's, uh, I mean, I'm sure they can do a fine job as well, you know, but it, it does make a difference. It would be silly to think it doesn't make a difference when someone who does nothing but plumbing is doing the plumbing. You know, I, I just think it's silly to even think that that's not gonna make a difference, you know? So uh, it just ensures that everything is is um, is right where it needs to be, that the connections are perfect because that's all he does. You see, clamps those pexes all day long, right? <laughs> so, you know, so I'd say that's the main, the main difference. So on a lighter note, what does Jerry do when he's not building homes or when he's not involved with the Kathleen Tiny Home? Does he go out and watch football or go out and watch pro wrestling? What does he do? <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, I'm pretty simple with my hobbies. It's uh, I'm a big NFL guy at national football league, right? I'm a, I'm a giant. So I came from New York originally. So I'm a New York giants fan. So I get pretty loud on Sundays during football, <laughs> during football season. And, uh, and then uh, I'm a gamer. I've, I've always been a gamer. So uh, it's actually what got me to Texas originally is I won a national video game contest a game called age of Kings. And uh, Microsoft hired me uh, in Dallas. So that's how I, I'm in Dallas. And then a year later, I started my construction company. So um, I, I'm still a big gamer. I'm not in the professional ranks anymore, right? I just play more, a little more casual. Uh, but, you know, I get, I get competitive with it sometimes. But uh, yeah, games. Uh, and I like to play uh, some retro ones here and there, like, uh, like get a, you know, an old Nintendo game or something, right? So it's kind of cool, uh, just a little little see something I used to do when I was a kid, 
you know, so sometimes I'll play around with, you know, a Tecmo Super Bowl or something like that, you know, and uh, have a little bit of fun with a with an older game. Um, and because, uh, you know, some of the new games, man, they get so complicated. It's like it takes it's like a job to learn how to, <laughs> to learn how to play them, you know. But uh, but yeah, gaming and football mainly and uh, and just spending some time with my wife and my dogs. And what is it with April? What does she do when she's not uh, busy she- to get lend? Yeah, yeah, she she loves I mean she loves honestly she loves what we do here so much. She's honestly looking at a lot of design stuff, you know, so even if she's not working, she's kind of just looking at different design shows. Uh we looked at a master class on it. Like it there's always somewhere you can learn something, you know. And I think, you know, one one of the times I would consider myself as as no longer progressing is if I get this idea in my head that I know everything, right? I don't know everything. I know a lot of stuff, right? But I don't know everything. And there's always somewhere you can learn some something from. Even if it's for like a very specific customer, you might learn something on this one design show that just gives you that one extra idea that takes it to the next level, right? And uh, so she j- does a lot of that. Um, you know, just kind of watching some shows, again, going on walks with the dog. So, you know, that's, that's generally what she does uh, in her spare time. And we socialize when we can. I'll be honest with you. If you you know any anyone out there who wants to start any business, the first five years just buckle up, buckle up, right? Because either you're going to be basically doing your business for basically five straight years and almost nothing else, or you're not going to make it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean that that if it's a small business anyway, right? So uh, we knew that going in. I already had started a business. I, I I had a full understanding of that. So we kind of set that five years. We're again we're in year four, and things are starting. To, we can feel it. The process is smoothing out. The manufacturing license is smoothing out, right? We're everything we we the banks were smoother with the banks and the loans, right? You know, we have our dealers set up. So it is starting to smooth out a little bit where we can maybe take a little more time to ourselves. But for the time being, it's our passion. So we have no issue at all just being in the office for 12, 13 hours a day. All right, Jerry, it was really wonderful having a nice, pleasant conversation with you. And we hope to have more such conversations in the future as well. We'd obviously be featuring the tiny homes that you'll be updating on your website. And uh, this interview would also be go as an article on Home Crux. And as soon as it is drafted and as soon as it goes live, I'd send it over to you. Thank you so much. And hey, listen, I really appreciate you guys and what you do because this industry is really about visibility and understanding uh, because there's you know, like that park model question you had right it, an excellent yes. question because it's it they people don't know you know a, a lot of will, they will show up at our warehouse and they will say what's a tiny house because honestly what has happened is tiny house has become a marketing term right like you go to home depot they're slapping tiny home on their yes. sheds it's like that is not a tiny home they, they right? are actually yeah. calling, it's not just home depot even amazon are calling the garden sheds a tiny house they're baiting it they're as a tiny house. it's crazy right so i, I can imagine the confuse the sheer confusion of people you know when they see the word tiny house so you know it's that's why it's great to have them at the warehouse though i get to show them the process the all thread rod, the materials, they get to see the guys working and they really see and understand what the product is. Uh, But yeah, again, I really appreciate, you know, you for what you do because it it is promoting and understanding and helping people to really understand what this product is. And, and, and also the do's and don'ts, you know, because decathlon is not for everybody. No one's for everybody. You know, Uh, it, it, it takes, it takes all of us, you know, to be able to service the customers, not to mention, most of us are very small manufacturers, to be honest with you, you know? So if we're going to be producing enough for, for the need, uh, it's going to take everybody. So, and including you, you know, so I, I really do appreciate you guys as well. In fact, we have recently completed this uh, Best Tiny Houses of 2024 ebook. I'd definitely send it over to you. We'd be working Thank on you. next ebook by mid-year and I'm pretty sure that one of your homes will be featured in it. I'd love it, man. We'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Jerry. It was wonderful having a chat with you. Same. Have a great afternoon. Appreciate it. Have okay. Bye-bye. 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 I can hear you, but I can't see you. You Just cannot see. see. No. Did you close your eyes? No, no. I didn't close my eyes. I'm able to see you all right. <laughs> Speaking, I was not expecting to see you because I thought it, you're like three minutes late. I am not sure if I'm <laughs> sure or not. I know. I have, I have a habit of being just always late someone catches me and so i was scrambling to find the link and get set up so 
and the other room is too noisy. Hang on, let me just turn that light off for a second. That's better. Yeah, it's better now. So, how's the day going? It's afternoon here in India. How's the uh, weather in England at the moment? It's raining. <laughs> it's raining? Yeah, yeah. All right, then. It's... I'll just give you a brief introduction it... of who I am and what I do. I okay. am... You can just adjust the camera and whenever you want me to start, I can begin.